In part two of this series, we're asked to find the coordinates of the centroid of the area bounded by the two curves written right here. This function has been graphed already and it's represented by this curve. And this function has been graphed and it's represented by this curve. I'm going to call this equation number one and this equation number two. The reason why I'm calling this one number two is because this one is on top of the other. Notice that it is higher than this one. And when you do these types of questions, you'll need to graph them so that you know which one's on top and which one's at the bottom, because that will play a major role later on when we're finding the centroid. What we have to do is find out where these two points intersect. Now it's obvious from this graph that they intersect at negative 2.46 and positive 3.79, but I'm going to show you how to find that mathematically. What you want to do is treat these equations as if they were a system of equations. And just like how we solve for x and y with a linear system, we'll do the same thing here. Here's what I mean. Let's align all of the terms on top of each other. So we'll start with this function and we will write down 6y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I'll try to align these terms so that they are underneath the ones of this equation. Right now we have 3y out here, 16 will be underneath the 4, negative x squared will be underneath this, negative x squared. We don't have an x term for this equation, that's fine. What we want to do next is either add or subtract these two equations so that we eliminate the y's. That way we have an equation that's exclusively in terms of x. What can we do to either this equation or this equation so that we can add or subtract them and eliminate one of the terms. What I'm thinking of is multiplying every term here by 2. If I multiply every term here by 2, this becomes a 6, this becomes negative 2, this still is 0, and this is 32. Now we can subtract them. If I subtract these two equations, I end up with 6y minus 6y is 0, 1 minus minus 2, that's like saying 1 plus 2, 3x squared, negative 4x minus nothing is negative 4x, 4 minus 32 is negative 28. This is now a quadratic equation and we can use the quadratic formula to find our x and our y. Instead of using the quadratic formula, I'll use a function on my calculator. This will quickly tell me the roots. You click 5, 3, and input your a, b, and c. We have 3, negative 4, and negative 28, and we should end up with the two numbers that were on the graph. We get 3.79, and the next one is negative 2.46. So let's write that down. Our lower bound is negative 2.46, and our upper bound is 3.79. The next thing that I have to do before inputting my functions into these two equations is I have to find out what A is equal to. A represents the area. So I need an equation that will represent the shaded region between these two curves. The way we do that is subtract the upper curve from the lower curve and then integrate between the two bounds that we just found. Here's what I mean by that. Our area is equal to the integral between our lower bound, which is negative 2.46, 3.79. And I mentioned earlier that this will be my y2 and this will be my y1. So I'm going to minus y2 from y1 with respect to x. So I'll call that dx. Now before I subtract the two functions, I need to isolate for y in both cases. To isolate for y in this case is not hard to do. All I do is divide both sides by 3, where I end up with my y2 as 16 over 3 minus x to the power of 2 over 3. And for this equation, I'll divide both sides by 6, leaving me with y1 is equal to 1 6 times x to the power of 2 minus 2 over 3x. I'm just reducing negative 4 over 6, became negative 2 over 3, plus 2 over 3. I'm going to subtract this now from here. And whatever I find, I'll input it into here, giving us 16 over 3 minus x squared over 3 minus, now all of this, I'll distribute this negative to this term 
this term and this term, this will give me the area. And then I'll collect like terms. This is a like term with this. These two terms are alike. And this term is on its own. Let's find out what these are equal to. We have 16 over 3 minus 2 over 3 gives us 14 over 3. Let's combine these two coefficients. Negative 1 over 3 minus 1 over 6. That gives us negative half x squared. And this is on its own. Now I have to integrate the following function. There you go. Now instead of finding the antiderivative and doing this manually, I'll use a function on my calculator that will quickly tell me what the area is. What I can do is click this button. And now I can input my lower and upper bounds. And my function is 14 over 3 minus 1 over 2 x to the power of 2 plus 2 over 3 times the variable x. When you're done, you click enter, and I get 20.38. My area is equal to approximately 20.4. That is the area that's shaded. Now that I found the area, I have to use these two formulas. For simplicity's sake, I'll rewrite them at the bottom. Now that I have the two formulas written, I can start by finding the horizontal distance to the centroid. We have x bar is equal to 1 over 20.4 times the integral between the same lower and upper bounds, negative 2.46 and 3.79 for the function x times y2 minus y1. I believe we already found y2 minus y1. It was the following expression. So I'll rewrite that below. This expression right here represents y2 minus y1. Next, what I have to do is multiply this x into each of these terms. And instead of doing this manually, which is going to take a really long time, what I will do is input this in my calculator. And it's not much different than what I was working on earlier. I'll put a bracket at the front, and I'll multiply the whole function by x times x. That gives me 13.58. That's just this part divided by 20.4 gives us 0 0.66. Now I need to repeat this process using the following formula. Before I use this formula, I'm going to find out what y1 plus y2 is. I already know what y2 minus y1 is. I'll just repeat using this function. But I need to find out what y1 plus y2 is. So I'll go up here and add up this function with that function. Here's what we get. y2 plus y1 is equal to the following. We have 16 over 3 minus x squared over 3 plus these three terms. And I'll highlight the like terms for clarity's sake. OK, now that I have them highlighted, I can use my calculator. I have 16 over 3, that first term, plus 2 over 3. I'm going to add up negative 1 over 3, negative 1 over 3, plus 1 over 6. That gives me negative 1 over 6, x squared. And lastly, this part remains the way it is. So here's my function. We have the integral between negative 2.46 and 3.79. We will take this function times this function. And of course, don't forget the 1 over 2 times 20.4, the area. This will give us y bar. I'll clean this up for you before we continue. Now that we have it organized, the next step is to do this using our calculator because to do this manually would just take a really long time. Here's how to do that. You start by clicking this button. And now you'll input your function. 
we have 6 minus 1 over 6 x to the power of 2 minus 2 over 3 times x. Open up another bracket to represent now this expression. We have 14 over 3 minus 1 over 2 times x to the power of 2 plus 2 over 3 times x. Close that. Now we'll input our bounds, negative 2.46, 3.79. Now we'll take this number and divide it by 20.4 times 2. Divided by 20.4 times 2. This gives us 2.57. Y bar is equal to 2.57. Therefore, our centroid lies at the point 0 0.66 and 2.57. Let's see if that is accurate according to the diagram. If this is 1, 0 0.66 would be a third of the way. And our other point was 2.57, which is up here. They're saying that the center of gravity lies right there. And so there you have it. That is how to find the centroid between two curves.